And here's a brain teaser. Uh, this person says, since we are most of the time using photographs as our source, is it possible to create a sunlight effect on our painting while the source photo does not have it? Um, and then asking for a quick tip. Well, that's an easy one to do. Easy when you make locating light source your first priority. Regardless of what you're painting, if you're a realistic painter, the first consideration before you ever do another thing is what is the light source, what kind of light source is it, and what is it doing to your subject. Now what happens is when we have a direct light source, and that's what this person is asking for, when we have a direct light source, meaning the light source is not being blocked by anything, um, the way the light hits a surface is going to cause areas that are in shadow and areas that are not in shadow. It's just that simple. I have a diagram right here that kind of shows you how that works. So we have within a, any kind of rounded surface especially, you can expect, first of all, you can expect there's going to be areas that are in light, such as this. Those are the areas that are catching the light rays. There are going to be areas that are not in light on the image itself. Those are the areas that cannot catch the direct light rays. And then you're going to have cast shadow, such as we have here. So we're going to have those three elements when we have a direct light source. The thing is, locate the light source and, and determine what it's doing. Now I have two examples here, to, uh, the same subject. I know we have three examples, but I'm going to, this is what I'm going to use for the uh, illustration. We have two examples of the same kind of subject under different light sources and notice what's happening. In this example, we can see that the very short cast shadow right here, that tells us that the light is higher up in the sky. We have a, a bit of light of the lightest part right here, so that tells us the light is located in the sky so that it's causing uh, this part to fall into shadow, this part to fall in creating a cast shadow. So that tells us it's over in this direction. I'll put this down like this. This direction somehow, but the, some of the light rays are catching the top right here. And in that direction, there are a few light rays catching the side right here. The opposite is happening in this one. In this one, we see a longer cast shadow here. We see the, the strongest part of the light is right here. So wherever the strongest part of the light is, you can take any object and turn it in the direction that this light is falling against this cast shadow. You can turn it in, any, in that direction and you can locate, pinpoint, where the light source is. Now, the light source is at some angle in the sky as well as some location. So it might be at the same angle, let's turn this around, it might be in the same angle, but if it's located in front of you, then the things that you're seeing are going to be in shadow, and the light's going to be behind. But if it's located to the side of you, even at that same angle, then the, the light parts are going to be on the, on the side that's facing or closest to, within the range of those light rays, and the shadows are going to be on the other side. So, uh, learning to read that light source. Always locate it, where is it, and look at what it's doing to the subject. Now, you can take any subject, no matter what light source it's under, what kind of light source it's under, you can take that subject, and by using that little principle of where is the, where is the uh, light source, where are the rays hitting, where, that, where would that light source be hitting the rays? You have to use a little imagination there. Uh, and where would it be in shadow? You can take that principle and convert and do a, a reinterpretation of a, any subject in a different light source. Now, I'll just show you very briefly um, one method that you can go about doing that. As always, I'm not going to do a complete painting because I don't think it's necessary. But one very good way of locating uh, where the light source is and what it's doing is to do what I call a notan. Those of you who studied with me know about the notan that actually reads and places the shadow and the light where the shadow and the light is located. 
And so, so if I were going to do a note ten of this little, uh, of this, this bale of hay right here, show you very briefly. If I were going to do a note ten, I'd put it right here in the corner. If I were going to do a note ten, I'd kind of throw the throw the drawing in of of the subject. Uh, and let's get that. There we go, like kind of like that, and the cash out and so on. Now, to read that, I can take. Uh, this is a Tombow pen. It's water soluble, but you can any any material that you have that is a single value. You can do this with a wash of uh, single value wash of any medium, um, depending on what medium you're working in. Or you can use you could use a single value pencil, but you don't use different values for placing this. You're simply saying this is where the shadow area is. And so, see in this, I would see that all this is in shadow. The light is behind. It's over here. It can't hit this. So all this is in shadow right here. So I would simply throw that all into one value. I would include the cast shadow, which is moving in this direction right here, as you can see. And I have a little bit of shadow right down here. Form shadow. A little bit. Of, not much. A little bit of form shadow right down there. And that throws that into a note 10, which is very, very simple. Now, suppose I, would, suppose I say, all right, I would like to use that light source on this image. All right, now we'll use the same principle. To use that light source on this image, what do I need? This whole frontal area, because it's turned pretty much in the same direction, the, sun, the light is, say, in this direction right here. See that aligned with that cast shadow. This, the light source, and we tell right there where it's the lightest, that kind of locates the direction of the sun. All right, so, then that, if I'm reinterpreting this, I'm saying, okay, this side is going to be light. It's going to be in light. But this side, this side is in shadow. Now, this light is going to be catching something on the top, such as we see there. Uh, well, we can see right there, because of the way it's, it's uh, turned, it's going to catch a little bit of something on the top. But most of this is in shadow. Now, you see here, all it's, in, it's all in shadow because it's all flat. But when it's rounded, you'll have a little light coming at the top too. So in order to throw this image, this image, under this light source, then all I need to do is to go in here and throw this in shadow. So I'll throw all this in shadow, right in here. Now as it comes up, it's going to go out of shadow about right there. This is where the, this is a form shadow. So called form shadow right here. So it's going to go out of shadow about right there. So that means this, this is going to be in light. Uh, and this is going to be in light because this is what the light source is doing right here. But this is also going to be caused because the light source is coming in this direction right here. It's going to be causing a cast shadow. And how I angle that is going to be determined uh, by that light source itself. So that the, this is going to cast some, a, a shadow, something like like that. Now, now that you've got the no 10, of course you'll have the surroundings too, and the surroundings are going to respond to the light the same way. Uh, but then all you need to do is interpret that in paint. Now very briefly, I'm just going to do a very brief block in to show you how to think about that. And I'm doing just image. I'm not really doing surroundings here, but just how to think. All right, so if this is in shadow, this is pretty deep shadow. This is translated in there. It's pretty deep shadow, but we know because of the reflective light that shadow is going to have some gradation to it. So you might start very gently. You might start uh, right here with a relatively deep shadow tone or value right here. And then as that would go up, you keep to keep that in shadow, you're going to keep using the shadow values and you would throw that in shadow as it's going up. Now uh, I'm not using, I'm just using a value range here. I'm not using, uh, I'm not trying to interpret the color there. Just just the value range. So you see that goes into shadow. And as it rounds up, the way shadow behaves, as it rounds up, it, the shadow gets a little bit more shallow. As it gets, as it gets closer to light, the shallow, shadow gets a little bit more shallow. So we get it a little bit more shallow here, make it just a little bit lighter. Right in here, like this. You see the very subtle gradation. Now we can get that even deeper at the bottom. Let's get this. 
there we go like that get that a little bit more like that at the bottom and then let's get that a little bit more gradated and there's the gradation and then when it reaches it then it continues to get a little lighter as the shadow goes up and around that rounded surface so you see you can see as a, a flat surface flat surface you may have some gradation the rounded surface you're going to have a great deal of gradation and then it begins to transition into light now you can kind of see what goes here what happens here uh, when it transitions into light we don't see, we won't see very much light up here at all so I'm going to pull all that shadow color out of the brush let's get a paper towel here and be sure I get all the the paint out of the brush and then it's going to, this is very, this is a very, very strong light. So uh, we see that it's hitting the strongest, it's hitting the strongest when it gets, it would, when it would be right, well, it's over here, it's going to hit the strongest. So right up here, it won't hit quite that strong. So I'll go over into the light. And I will come up with a, half tone that is about uh, half tone two to three and then we will interpret this and bring it down and let it gradate into that shadow color let's get just a little, a little bit more light catching right up here we can assume right up there and then we bring this half tone down and let it gradate now gradate means mixing so we'll have this tone greatest of transition. It's also called the terminator right there. Now we go over here and we're going to find very, very light. It's going to be very, very light. So now we can go in it and we it's not going to be all solid white. We can see here some gradation as it go down goes down, but we can see it this this side is flat. And so we will go something like this. <clears throat> Go to the very lightest light. That and I don't have the lightest light possible on the palette, so I'll just go pull a little bit of white, place it right here. So we can start out with uh, about the same half tones we have up in here before we go to the lightest light. Kind of move down in here. Now, um, with the light shining in in this direction right here, we're going to have a little bit of a feeling of shadow down here. So it's a um, right and here's not rounded so we it's going just because the light the red light rays are kind of not not as many maybe hitting in this direction so we'll just make that a little bit darker and then as we move around it we can make it a little lighter building those half tones up towards the light getting lighter now i'm going to go ahead and just keep it on a little bit the light part of just a little bit on the darker side i'm going to put a little bit more of that on the edge like that. Now let's move into the actual white of what would be about half tone one. If you're not familiar with half tones, uh, well, if you're not familiar with half tones, soon we will have a course up on the website uh, called uh, Using Half Tones. And you might check that out. The half tones are simply those tones between the light and the shadow areas. So get this maybe a little bit. Lower. Now, get that half tone where that light is going to hit the strongest. It's saying it's about right here. So it's going to pick, pick it up pretty strong right here. Just like that. Just like this. Let's see that angle. And catch the angle with the shadow. So it's going to pick it up about right in there. It's the strongest. And then you can create your textures and so on uh, as you move them. I'm not just this is just a block in so I'm not going to show you that part. Now and the next thing of course is the cast shadow. Now we would assume that cast shadow would be on maybe on grass either either grass that is dead grass like we see in this one or grass that is green grass as we see in that one. Uh, but that shadow tone is going to is it will take on the color of the grass and then add the complement in there to uh, come into the color of the grass to get the um, feeling of shadow on the grass. So that ends up being, that will be darker. The, the uh, cast shadow is darker. 
and it would go something like that to create the cat. Now this is, uh, remember this is simply a value, even though I'm using uh, the, I'm just using quinacridone burnt orange and white there to show you just the value. Now that then, you see, retranslates or reinterprets what we have right here under this kind of light, but we've used this subject. Now if you want to get a real workout on conveying a new light source, or a reinterpreting light source, we have a course on the website, dianeminds.com, two ends, dianeminds.com. Um, we have a course there at the very top of the page, come down just a little bit and you'll find it there, called Conveying the Light Source. So if you take that course, you'll know how to do this. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com where I have full length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.